Do you ever hear people give really bad advice when it comes to eating a raw food diet? On one end of the spectrum, you have people saying that you should eat very, very little to make sure you're eating very light and ideally just taking in air and ideally having the intention to become a breatharian because that's the way to heaven. And then you have other people saying that the only way to succeed on a raw vegan diet is to eat so much at every meal that you feel like vomiting, right? Or you have people saying like, you should be consuming stimulants. Like you wanna make sure you're getting lots of chocolate every day because chocolate is the highest source of antioxidants. Or you got people saying like, oh, the only way to get protein on a raw vegan diet is to make sure you eat lots of nuts and seeds, right? Just like dumb advice like that. I'm sure I'm sure you heard various, uh, various types of bad advice like that out there, right? Well, in this video, I'm gonna make sure that I 10X your likelihood of succeeding on a raw vegan diet. Or if you're a raw vegan coach, or vegan coach, I wanna make sure that this video helps you 10X the likelihood of your client's success. Cause I know there's a lot of coaches out there watch my videos and they want their clients to succeed on a vegan and raw, and raw vegan diet, but they're having trouble with that because most people aren't taught what I'm about to teach you right now. In order to succeed on a raw vegan or fruitarian diet, you wanna make sure that you're always stocked up. You've, your fridge, your cupboards, your countertop, they should be stocked up on the following foods. First and foremost, quality foods, quality fruits and vegetables. Like quality is everything, guys. It's just like uh, relationships. Like do you want a lot of friends or do you want really good friends? You want really good friends. Even if you said one really good friend, that's all you'd need. You don't need a whole bunch of friends. You need one really, really good one. Same with listening to your, you know, your favorite music. You know, you don't need like a whole bunch of different artists. You can find like one really good artist that you love and it just, that's all you want to listen to. So with food, it's with fruit, it's, it's, it's very similar. It's like you just need quality. You got to focus on quality, quality, quality. We'll talk about variety in just a sec, but um, quality is so freaking important. There's been times where like I go to the store and I, I, I just buy some melons and I come home and I'm like, the quality is so good. That's all I want to eat. I just want to eat melons because the quality is insane. So I go back to the store and I, and I just buy out all their melons. I come home and I just eat those melons for three days. There's this time where I did that and the melons were so good. It, it felt like it was a three day LSD come up. Like I was coming up on acid for three days. I was almost scared to drive. I remember going to the gym with my friends and I'm like, I'm not sure if it's safe to be here at the gym. Like I feel like I'm gonna just like elevate out of this planet. I feel so good. These melons are so freaking good. It was insane. And ever since then, I've been looking for those same melons. Every summer I'm like, where are those melons? Where are those melons? So quality is so good that it makes you like remember it and want to tell stories about it. Quality, like it goes without saying, like who doesn't want to eat really, really delicious fruit? Right, but set the intention that that's what you're gonna find and find it, you shall. So that's tip number one, is set the intention for high, high quality. When you do that, it's very enjoyable. It's not a matter of like, ooh, am I gonna be raw today or not? It's a matter of like, why would I eat anything other than this? This is so freaking good. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is make sure that when you stock up, you have different levels of ripeness. So let's talk about bananas for a sec. When it comes to stocking up on bananas, you don't just want to buy a box of bananas and then that's it. When you buy them, they're going to be green and then they're not going to be ripe and then they're going to be kind of ripe and then they're going to be like too ripe and then you're not going to have any bananas. You're going to go buy bananas again. So when I stock up on bananas, I make sure I always have green bananas in stock. I have bananas that are like ripe, ready to go. And then I have frozen bananas in case I run out of green ones or run out of ripening ones. I always have frozen ones in stock. So you want to have different levels of ripeness. And if you're not sure if the fruit is going to be ripe or not, like let's say you're trying a new type of melon. I always suggest buying three. If it's a new fruit, maybe it's like a persimmon or maybe it's a type of kiwi or whatever, dragon fruit. You don't know if it's going to be ripe. Buy three equally ripe pieces of that fruit. And then when you get home, they, they're probably like hard. Unripe fruit is usually hard. Try one at that state. See what it's like to eat an unripe thing of that state. An unripe fruit. You might be like, oh, this is sour, this is gross, this is crunchy, this is nasty. With the next fruit, give it, you know, a couple days. Let it soften up a bit. And then when it's kind of soft, cut it open, taste it. If it's not very good, you feel like it could be a bit sweeter, wait another couple days for that third piece. Let it get super soft or super ripe. Then eat it and you're like, wow, this is so good. So then you'll know for the future. You know, because there's certain mangoes out there that they have to be pretty soft, but there are other mangoes out there that if they're too soft, it's overripe, it's garbage. They have to be kind of firm still, okay? So if you're not sure of a certain type of mango, a certain type of fruit, just buy three, try one hard, try one, try one medium, and try one super soft. The third tip when it comes to stocking up is you do want variety. You do want variety. So you wanna make sure that, and, and th this helps, having a lot of variety helps, especially when you're in a place where you can't get high quality. Because with variety, you can mix a bunch of stuff together and it can taste, pretty good. So 
You want variety almost as a backup in case you can't get quality, but you also want variety just because there's so many different vitamins, minerals, nutrients that we don't even know about. We discovered vitamin B17 not too long ago. We discovered like niacin, B, vitamin B, B3, I think it is, or B6 or something. We discovered that like semi-recently. There's tons of different stuff that we're, we're still unraveling and still discovering, not to mention the, the symbiosis of certain nutrients, you know, like I'm sure you've heard about, or maybe you haven't, but uh, turmeric gets absorbed way more in the body when it's combined with white pepper. When you combine white pepper and turmeric, the absorption rate of turmeric goes up by like 2000% or something. So there's certain symbiotic relationships that nutrients have that we don't even know about. So variety is, is, is probably a good thing. And then when you go in nature, you go look at all the variety that all these different animals are eating, like gorillas and stuff. I think it's gorillas. Again, I don't know the exact statistics on this, but gorillas have like you know, hundreds of different varieties of plants that they consume on a yearly basis. Whereas for us, when it comes to plants outside of fruits, you know, it's usually like, what do we have? Spinach, lettuce, kale, beet tops, Swiss chard, arugula, maybe that's it. Maybe butter lettuce, <laughs> six or seven different like leaves on a yearly basis. That's not much, not much. And when it comes to vegetables, what sort of vegetables are most people consuming or juicing? Carrots, celery, broccoli, cauliflower, there's not a whole lot of vegetables going on there. When it comes to fruit, what fruits are we consuming on a regular basis? Same thing. It's not very many. It's like apples, bananas, oranges, melons, dates, avocados, not many. So there's probably some nutrients that we don't even know about that we're low in if we're not getting enough variety. So variety, an easy way to get variety is to, uh, in fact, I'll post a list that Raw Food Romance texted me the other day. Uh, I'll post it in the description. You can go look in the description. You'll see like there's like s over 70 different foods they eat on a regular basis, on a weekly basis. So check that out and then just add that to your shopping list. Or if you have someone just shopping for you, be like, here's the menu, go buy like one of everything. And then that way you, you are for sure going to get a large amount of variety. So that's the tip there for stocking up. Another, another thing to stock up on is, I mentioned this earlier, but you want to have like four different types of food always in stock. You want to have countertop food, bananas, or just fruit in general, really, like apples or whatever. So countertop foods that don't need to be refrigerated. Oranges, another example. Um, avocados that are ripening up, for example. So countertop food. And then you want to have fridge food. And fridge food is going to be stuff like greens, maybe like raspberries or something. If you somehow have the discipline not to eat raspberries as soon as you buy them. I don't know how anyone does that. And then like juices, fresh juices, or stuff that's really, really ripe, like really ripe avocados or really ripe bananas. You put it in the fridge and slow down the ripening process. So I like to ripen up avocados on the counter as soon as they get to like that point where they're edible, I throw them in the fridge and they can last another week in there. Um, so fridge foods. And then you wanna have cupboard foods, like stuff that just lives in the cupboard, like raisins or dates or dried apricots or something or nuts and seeds or something. Uh, although nuts and seeds should probably be kept in the freezer just so they last longer, but uh, yeah, a lot of people just keep them in the cupboard. And then, yeah, the, the final one is the, the freezer. So for me, I like to have berries in there and mangoes in there and bananas. Those are like the four different types of foods that you want to make sure you always have stocked up. So for example, today, uh, I was running kind of low on, I really love frozen bananas because I thaw them out and I had like the best hack for bananas. I made a post about it on my Instagram. If you're not following my Instagram already, make a point to do that. I'm at Fruitarian. I give like Fruitarian hacks all the time on Instagram. I made a hack, I made a video post talking about my hack yesterday with bananas, but I've been eating so many frozen bananas lately. They've been so good that I'm about to run out. And so I'm like, oh, what can I have uh, for dinner tonight? So I just went to my cupboard, opened the cupboard up and I'm in a pinch. I'm like, oh, I'll just blend up these dates. Blend up like eight dates, blended up eight dates. <laughs> Friends and I have a joke where we say blend. I blend up like eight dates and uh, just, Blended it up, blended it up with some water, drank it, boom, simple. Could have easily added some daily green boost to that as well. So yeah, if you're looking for like an awesome mineral powder to get all your minerals on a raw vegan diet, check out daily green boost. I'll post a link for that in the description. It's just organic barley grass juice powder. Those are the types of foods that you want to be stocked up on. And then uh, if you're, if you need some stuff, and you don't feel like going grocery shopping, you can do what I do, which is use Instacart. Uh, I'll post a link for Instacart in the description as well. Instacart will do your groceries for you. I don't recommend you get them to do your fruit shopping unless you ask them to pick up like unripe avocados. Those are always safe. I recommend use Instacart for them to pick up uh, stuff like all your, all your leafy greens. So if you want to make a nice salad or something, order Instacart. They'll save you a ton of time. You can't really mess up buying lettuce and avocados for you. Use Instacart. It'll save you a lot of time when it comes to stocking up. But that's the first thing because if you're not stocked up, you're screwed. The people who fail on raw are the people who don't stock up on raw. 
It's that simple. I don't know anyone that fails on raw that's always stocked up. Because the only time you're ever craving foods, and we're going to get into this in just a sec, is when you're not eating enough. And you can't eat enough if you don't have enough. Right? So just like dinner time tonight, it was like time to eat, but I was running out of bananas. I'm like, oh, I'll just have some dates. Now, if I didn't have those dates in stock, I'd be screwed. I'd be like, well, might as well make some rice. Right? But if I have the food in stock and it's enjoyable, it's delicious, it's high quality, I'm going to eat it. It's going to be no problem. Now, this goes into my next point here. So first point, stock up. Second point is eat properly. And the first point of eating properly is making sure you're eating enough. Biggest mistake I see newbies make is they don't eat enough. I covered this in my last video in detail. Look, you get hungry, you have cravings. Those cravings can range anywhere from freaking peanut butter cookies to McDonald's hamburgers. Your cravings can be all over the place. You're not you when you're undercarbed. It's like being drunk. If you see me drunk and we talk when I'm drunk, I'm gonna act very differently. If you see me when I'm really undercarbed and I talk to you, I'm not gonna be talking like this kind of peppiness. I'm gonna be, I mean, I've made videos when I'm water fasting and I'm like so slow and mystical because I'm undercarbed. That's just what happens. So stay carved up and eat enough calories to meet your goals. Most people, again, everyone has different goals, but most people, if you're walking like 10,000 steps a day, you could, a good equation for you is probably like 14 to 15 calories per pound of body weight. And most people don't hit that. Most people are like, when they go to raw, they eat too little and so they get hungry. But if you just, if you're just starting out on raw and you want to like combat cravings, heck, I say even go like 17 calories per pound of body weight. Aim for 17 calories per pound of body weight if, you're, if you want to combat cravings. Because you can't crave something if you're full. It's that simple. And so the big, biggest reason people slide off the diet is because they're freaking hungry all the time because they don't do tip number one, which is stock up. And when they don't stock up, they don't do tip number two, which is I'm saying eat properly. And part of eating properly is eating enough. So that's tip number one when it comes to eating properly. Um, next, you want to eat in the right combinations. A lot of people complain about digestive issues or they complain about heartburn or, or um, headaches or diarrhea or something or just like gut aches or whatever. Chances are they're not eating in the right combination or like complaining about gas or whatever. It's like, you gotta eat in the right combination. So if you, the easiest way to talk about food combining is you say, always eat the juiciest foods first. That's simple. So let's do, a, let's do a little thought experiment here. You have watermelon and you have dates. Which one should you eat first? Watermelon. You have the watermelon first and then depending on how much of the watermelon you eat, you wait a period of time before you have the dates. It's not enough to eat the watermelon, wait 10 seconds and eat the dates. That's combining the, the food. You don't want to combine dried fruit with super, super juicy fruit. So always eat the juiciest foods first. So what I like to do is, oh, I'll tell you a little story to illustrate this. I was having oranges every morning. You know, I was living in California for a bit. I was having oranges every morning. And then right before I'd head out the door, I'd have a banana and then go for my workout. That was it. It was just like oranges all morning, maybe three, 400 calories of oranges and then a banana or two and then I'd head out the door. And I would wait like, you know, 30 minutes in between. One morning, I did the opposite. I just wasn't thinking right. I just grabbed these bananas, started eating these bananas, and then right before I head out the door, grab a couple oranges, throw those down, boom. I was like, oh my God, like I don't feel good. Because the oranges digest so fast, and the bananas digest so much slower. They're just, they're dense. They're like the potatoes of the raw vegan diet. So just that little switch from going orange banana to then banana orange, big difference. So always, always, always have the juiciest foods first. Another tip with food combining is you never want to mix fat with sugars. So you could have avocados, which is fat, with like lettuce. That's cool because there's no sugar in lettuce. But you don't want to have avocado with dates. Will it taste amazing? Of course. I was at Woodstock Fruit Festival and I had mame sapote, which is like pure carbohydrates. It's like pumpkin pie, rich carbs. It's so good. So people say it, it's fatty because it's so rich in carbohydrates. It's just pure carbs, all sugar. I had mame sapote. Mixed with avocado because I was just like, screw it, let's just see what happens. I knew it was going to be really yummy. It was insane. It was super good. I got the mame from Miami fruit and um, avocado from Miami fruit. I mixed them together. Unbelievable. So good. But I felt like trash. I felt so sick. I felt oof, so gross because it's like the densest carb with the densest fat. Disgusting. Which is why people feel like crap when they eat raw food gourmet. And they don't know it's the raw food gourmet. They just think it's the raw food diet. No, it's the combinations why you feel like crap. So I was at a water fasting retreat one time and some guy didn't know anything about eating. He came to pick up his wife after the fast. She had lost a bunch of weight and comes in there and we're all having our watermelon for breakfast. And some people are making a banana smoothie for breakfast instead because that's just what they want to have. This guy comes along, he has this big banana smoothie and then finishes like 10 bananas in the smoothie. And then he sits down and starts eating watermelon. And everyone's looking at him like, 
dude, that's not going to go down too well. He's like, really? What do you mean? He's like, I think I'll be fine. So he eats it. And then like 10 minutes later, he's like, yeah, I'm not feeling too well. Well, no shit, dude. All those dense bananas. On, and then you put the watermelon on top. Horrible combination. So hope that illustrates the point. Another, th another thing to keep in mind too is I talked earlier about variety. But when it comes to eating your meals, you want to have really simple meals. You want to aim for simplicity at mealtime and then variety throughout the year. So don't feel like just because variety is important that you should have like 30 ingredients in one meal. Have 30 ingredients throughout the week, throughout the month. You know, you don't need to have them all in one meal. You can have a meal of oranges and then for lunch you could have, you know, a meal of, of you know, four different types of greens or whatever with some avocado dressing on top. And then for dinner, um, who knows, you might have like some, some guacamole or something with celery as dip, whatever you want, right? But just like that'd be one day and the next day you have a different type of fruit for breakfast, a different type of salad, a different type of dip in the evening, right? But simplicity at the meals and then variety throughout the year. That will make sure you're eating properly and you're not going to have any upset digestive issues. Um, another tip when it comes to eating properly, wow, this is a big one, is most people eat way too many nuts and seeds. I don't know why. Like, what makes people think that a nut or a seed was like meant to be eaten? It's meant to grow a tree. You can get away with eating a nut or a seed every now and then. Sure, no problem. Even even daily, pop pop. I recommend having a Brazil nut every day. It's a great source of selenium. One Brazil nut a day will give you like three hundred percent of your selenium needs for the day. Yeah, have a Brazil nut every day. Have a little bit of hemp seeds in your salad. Sure, but don't overdo the nuts and seeds. Like, my God, uh, they can be very addictive for some people too. They just eat they eat them. They can't stop eating. Like bags of cashews or. Pumpkin seeds or almonds, whatever, just can't stop eating them. But uh, you don't need nuts and seeds. You don't need a lot of them, I should say. You probably don't even need any of them, but helps with some variety in case you're lacking in that. Uh, but don't think that like nuts and seeds are super, super, super important. You gotta obsess over them because the omega-3 or the omega-6 or this or that. Like people become like hypochondriacs when they, with that regard. Like sure, have occasional nuts and seeds, be fine with that. But more often than not, people overdo the nuts and seeds. If you're gonna have nuts and seeds and you wanna have a lot of variety with them, do so, but have them in smaller quantities than you may think you need. Just be on the safe side. And if you're having stuff like chia or flax, make sure that before you consume it, you like grind it up in a coffee grinder so it's actually bioavailable. Because if you just eat a bunch of chia seeds or flax seeds, it's just gonna go right through you. And you look in your poop and like the seeds are gonna be fully formed in there. You're doing nothing for you. So grind them up, get the bioavailability bio happening and then consume them. Okay, and then if you are gonna grind them up ahead of time, like if you buy them ground up, I don't recommend buying them ground up. I recommend buying them as their whole in their whole seed, keeping them in the fridge, grinding them up fresh, and then pouring them onto your salad or whatever. If you have to grind them up ahead of time, uh, make sure to keep them in the fridge or the freezer even, is even better. Keep maintain the bioavailability. Uh, and then when it comes to eating properly too, just a good rule of thumb, read the 80-10-10 diet by Dr. D uh, Dr. Doug Graham. I'll post a link for that in the description. That book will go into much more depth on everything I've covered. It talks about how to succeed on a raw vegan diet by eating the right amounts and the right types of foods. Check that out, link in description. 80-10-10 diet by Dr. Doug Graham. It's like considered the Bible by most raw vegans and fruitarians. Talked to him the other day about that book. He said he hired six editors to help him edit that book. That's why it stood the test of time. And that book has sold tens of thousands of copies, if not hundreds of thousands of copies. It's like the ultimate book on how to succeed with raw foods. Highly recommend. Um, so the third tip now, we've covered stocking up, we've covered eating properly. Now the third tip is to use the diet. Use it like a tool. Don't just, like I got this yoga wheel, right? Imagine if I bought this yoga wheel, but I didn't use it. Instead, I just like looked at it and I polished it. And I was like this. You guys would think I'm insane. Like it's not meant to be just like, uh, like hugged and, and looked at and just obsessed over. It's meant to be used. I got to do back bends with it, right? Stretches with it. I got to use the yoga wheel. So same with thing with the raw food diet. Big thing people miss out on is they don't actually use the diet. They just obsess about it. So let's talk about what using the diet actually looks like. When I first got into the raw vegan diet, I used it to clear my skin. And then I, without knowing it, I used it to overcome constipation and a bunch of other health issues. But I consciously used it to clear my skin. And then I used the diet to help me perform well in triathlon, to win running races. I used it for my athletic performance. Right? And then I used it, and then I started realizing that like, wow, this diet makes me feel so good that I was using it to enhance my moods so that I could be better in my relationships with my friends and my family. So I wouldn't trigger, get triggered by little things and snap out and get angry anymore. So I used the diet to live my life better. I didn't obsess about it. I see so many people doing. Plus then I, I use the diet to build a name for myself. I use the diet to build a business for myself. I use the diet to, to help other people use it as a tool as well. I, do, I don't share the diet to say, oh, here's the raw vegan diet, you should obsess about it. I'm like, here's the raw vegan diet, now use it to clear your skin. Use it to lose some weight. Use it to feel much better. 
Use it to win that running race that you want to do or complete that ultra marathon that you want to complete, but use the diet. So when people ask me why I stopped eating raw foods, I tell them it's because I used raw veganism to enhance my triathlon career. But then when I quit triathlon and I had already cleared my skin, I didn't really need to use the diet anymore. So I wanted to try using cooked food to help me build more muscle. Then I got into that quite a bit and I was like, I don't even want to be building all this muscle and feeling so low and heavy all the time. I dropped like 174 pounds and I'm down to 145 and I feel freaking amazing. So I love using the diet now to stay 145, stay light, stay sharp, stay agile. It's amazing, but I'm using the diet. That's, that's one thing. That's one way to use it. It's like use it for some, like do something with it. Don't just obsess about it. Be aware of your performance. Be aware. I, I talked about the other day in the, in the video, I talked about how I was using the raw food diet to help me sleep less so I could get more work done in my business. I got an hour less sleep every night and my sleep efficiency, sleep quality went up. So I'm using it to become a better entrepreneur. And then another way to use the diet is just to talk to other people about the benefits that you're receiving. So whether that means on a YouTube video, whether it means talking to friends and family on the phone, just like talk to others about your benefits. And that will not only help more people adopt the diet, that'll help you as well become more aware that, wow, well, yeah, this really is a benefit. My skin actually is cleared up. Well, I actually have lost a couple pounds. I actually was able to drop a couple minutes off my 5K time. You know, just talk to other people about the benefits. That'll really, really help. And then lastly, yeah, if you love talking about the raw vegan diet, you love helping other people with it, then you can use it like I've been able to use it and turn it into your full-time income source, whether that means creating a 30-day raw food challenge like I did, creating raw food eBooks, becoming a raw food coach. You can turn this into your income source. If you're obsessed about this type of stuff and, and, and you want to actually start doing something with it though, not just purely obsessed about it, but actually use it, become a raw vegan coach, become a Become a health and lifestyle coach. If you want more information on how to do that and how I was able to do that, I'll post two links in the description. One will take you to my story that shows you how I was able to get everything set up in a couple of days. The other link will show you how you can join a community of a bunch of other vegan and raw vegan coaches who are also on this path to help other people with the raw vegan diet as well. If you want to join the community, I'll post that link in the description below. And I'm very happy with this uh, phone that I'm filming on right now. It's gone on for 30 minutes. The old phone used to cut me off after like 20 minutes. So. Shout out to the Google Pixel. This is great. Uh, said everything I need to say. Thanks so much for watching. If you got a value bomb out of this video, just type value bomb down below in the comments. That'd be awesome. And please give this video a thumbs up. I appreciate you. 